it's Jason here for the love of tractors and it is Friday Friday fun day huh so I had a couple things that I wanted to discuss with you and the first is I kind of want to show off my Krauss field cultivator this is a 44 foot model all 3d printed you know got it put together last week you've probably seen some pictures of it let's uh, do some video on it but what I wanted to do <laughs> wow the wing just fell um, what I wanted to do more than show off the Krauss field cultivator is I wanted to discuss custom toy pricing with you guys so you know that is a touchy subject with people and the reason <laughs> I swear that wing stays up <laughs> anyway the reason I wanted to do that was I posted a video of this and I'll just I'll just show it to you as I talk here you know wings wings completely unfold the um, it does go up and down the tandems walk and everything so I've I've put in just as much detail as humanly possible here and I had a little help with this print I'm not gonna lie I didn't do it all by myself I did do an awful lot of it by myself though and that uh, you know I'm pretty proud of that because it, it turned out exceptionally well I think this is without a doubt the best uh, 3d printed product I've done so far and that's gonna reflect in the price so that's the thing here and that's what I wanted to talk about so like I said I was posting this up posting pictures of this up on one of the social media places and I believe it was Instagram, so check us out there for the love of tractors. <laughs> and so the topic of price came up. Now, of course, everybody wants something cheap. And then, of course, I want to make money because I have time and effort into that. And so the trick is to find a happy medium. I'm not trying to rip anybody off. And I, um, <laughs> there are guys out there doing that. I, I sort of think and I'm not one of them but anyway I, so this is gonna be if you want one of these from me finished up let's call it 200 bucks that, that's just that's just the way it's gonna be and I'm not gonna do very many of them in fact I may not sell any of them I just don't know and I don't and the reason being and here here's here's why the price is up on it and let's just talk about that all, so all this was 3D designed, right? So there's time in that. And I have a lot of time in that. And I'll be honest, I'm never going to get... No, that's not true. But if I if I price this to recoup that cost in the time I spent doing this, I'd never sell any at all because, it, you know, we'd be talking a four or $500 toy. That's, you know, I obviously can't do that. I, I realize nobody's going to do that. I mean, there's, there, don't get me wrong, there's some people out there that do. I've paid that much for a toy before. But it, it's a little excessive. And so, I don't like doing that. So, I did this for myself. I didn't do this because I ever anticipated on selling any. And like I said, I may never sell any, and that's okay. Um... But the, I wanted one because actually I want two because we have two real ones at the farm and that's what I like. I like stuff that we drive. So anyway, like I said, lots of, lots and lots of time going into this design. Two is Shapeways charges you based on the amount of space a project takes on their 3d printer now obviously I've tried the best I can to make it compact so when it prints it's just the frame and the frame pieces are stacked so that you have a little less cost involved and then a completely separate kit is all the shanks and all the wheels and tires the completely separate order that you have to make and those take up quite a bit of room too so what you end up with is the raw cost, meaning my cost, you know, my price from Shapeways unassembled is over a hundred dollars by quite a bit, actually. <laughs> so all of a sudden, like I said, I put I put this up on Instagram, and this guy's like, 
That should be $30. He might have been joking. I'm pretty sure he wasn't. My cost, unpainted, unassembled, all of that, over $100. That's not even figuring in my design time and the extra design help I got. Okay? Now, you got to put it together, right? So, it, it's pretty easy to put together. I'm not going to lie. It's it's straightforward. And if you do end up wanting a kit of these, I'll send you a, a, a the, the CAD drawing of it and it'll kind of show you the different parts, you know, because for example, the shanks up here mount on front of the frame versus say this one that mounts on the rear of the frame and then goes over the frame. So it's just like the real one. The real one has shanks just like that too. We actually assembled both of our Kraus field cultivators in our shop. So <laughs> I've got some experience with that on the real thing too. Anyway, my I guess my point is, so what you have to do to put this together is you, you take the frame, you clean it, you paint it, and you do the same thing with the wheels and tires and the shanks. Now you've got all these painted parts, and just because I thought it should be uh, extra hard, I painted <laughs> the shank savers, I don't know if you can see that, but I painted that detail onto every shank. So, as you can imagine, it's a big field cultivator, 44 foot field cultivator, there's a lot of shanks here. So, that took some time as well. Anyway, those had to be hand painted, the, the shank savers. Okay, so, I've got the frame painted. Now, you have to put it together, that takes some straight pins, all these joints are held by straight pins. You know, no problem there. Not not terribly difficult. I put the wheels and tires on last, and I put the uh, the axle assemblies and all that on last because I wanted enough room to get all these shanks on and not have to sort of fight the rest of it. So then then I just went through and started putting shanks on. And basically, what I would do is I'd put one on, I'd set this wing section off to the side, I'd put a second one on. Wait, you know, so on and so forth. Sit and just kind of let it set up and dry real good. Now I'm using super glue. It should set up instantly, but if you've used super glue before, you know that doesn't always work. So then, then I just went to the next one. Same process. Next one, next one, next one. So I basically spent three nights after work putting shanks on. Now I could do the second one a lot quicker. I'm not gonna lie. I got and I kind of figured some tricks out along the way and so on and so forth. But I easily now, being a little slicker at it, easily have two hours just in mounting shanks on this thing. So, my time's worth something, right? I mean, I own a business, and we do sandblasting and things like that. My shop rate is 50 bucks an hour. Now, I realize farm toy assembly rate is not 50 bucks an hour, but 15 bucks an hour sure the heck isn't unreasonable. I mean, if... It, my opinion, if you're going to build something and you're not going to charge 15 bucks an hour to build it, you're wasting your time. Unless you're just doing it for fun, you're wasting your time and you're hurting the rest of us that build. And I know guys that charge double that. You know, they're good. They're the best of the best. Obviously, they deserve that. But I think minimum <laughs> you should charge $15 an hour. It, like I said, it's it's not worth it for me. If I can't get that for a toy, I'm not going to bother with it. Just That's just the bottom line. I, I can make far more money doing something else. Um, okay, so anyway, that aside, so, you know, then I put the shanks on and then wheels and tires. And I probably have another half hour doing wheels and tires. So let's just say painting, priming, assembly three to four hours. I think that's probably conservative, to be honest with you. And I haven't even run hydraulic lines and things like that, and I don't know if I'm going to just yet, but we'll see. So, three to four hours at $15 an hour, let's say uh, 60 bucks in assembly time. I don't think that's completely unreasonable. And again, we have over $100 in the cost of printing. And then we have shipping, and then I have to ship it to you. And so, if I'm going to make anything off design time and anything like that, this has got to be a $200 toy. And I realize, like, there's a lot of young guys. And I remember when I was a young guy and didn't have very much money. I, mean, I still don't have much money. But I remember when I was young and, you know, you're mowing yards for the summer, putting up hay or 
um, whatever kids do today, I don't know. It was hard to see those toys that you wanted and you couldn't get. And I know Ertl makes, you know, I've got one of their crappy field cultivators here somewhere. They make those and they sell them for, you know, 15, 20 bucks. They also make 10,000 of them. And they're made in China by people who make two cents an hour because they're slaves. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's a little little bit of a tangent there, but so so, so like I said, th this <laughs> this just can't be sold for thirty bucks. It just can't. And I, you know, I know, I get it, I get it. Everybody wants wants their their stuff cheap, but it just doesn't work that way. And if you see, if you talk to any of the other you know guys, three D printing guys, the scratch building guys, or whatever. We all deal with the same issue. We all deal with those people that want you to give them something for nothing. And and it just can't be done. So, sorry about that. But, anyway. So, back to this. I, I don't know what I... Oh, I, <laughs> that's not even true. I do know what I'm going to put this on. I can't show you yet. Because it's still a project. Still a bit secretive. It's going to be super cool, though. I can't wait to show you guys. Um... So right now, at least for today, I've got it on a Steiger 620 uh, Anniversary Edition. And I, I detailed it. I added flasher bars. I added handrails. I added flasher beacons and mirrors up top. And you can see the handrails on either side there, I think. So that's pretty cool. I think I like that a lot. Um, anyway, like I said, that's what I'm working on today. That's what, you know, I, I had it on the Steiger back there, the Lion back there yesterday. I've had it on the Panther. I had it on my, uh, you know, 8345RT at some, at some point. And this this field cultivator is just going to make the rounds on my model farm with whatever the heck I feel like throwing it on that day. And, you know, that's that. So, Anyway, that's kind of going to wrap this up, and I, I hope I wasn't sounding preachy to you guys, and I know it got a little bit long here, but I wanted to explain why these 3D models cost so much. We, the guys, the you know, the ones that, of us that are doing this, we have a lot of time and money invested in these, and I don't think, I just don't think unless you're doing it, you understand, and and, and of course you wouldn't. Why, why would you understand if you weren't doing it, you, you know, if you're not dealing with that, but those of us that are... We we understand the kind of the kind of time investment that it takes to make something like this, and so now I hope you do too. I hope you have a better understanding of um, why a forty four foot field cultivator costs a couple hundred bucks, or why you know my um, you know Landall rip all over there costs sixty or seventy bucks or whatever you know it is. It, it takes time to make these things, and there's a there's a bit of an art to it. There's a bit of a science to it. And, um, you know, that's that. So, guys, I really appreciate you watching. As always, please like, share, and comment below. I want to hear what you think below. I mean, um, you know, I, I realize things are tight. Things are getting tough for everybody. And that's uh, that's the unfortunate reality we live in today. That it's, it's uh, hard to make it go. And it makes your hobbies uh, sometimes tough to, to work on. But you know, you got to push forward and you got to uh, make sacrifices. And if you like something like this, sometimes uh, you got to just save up to get it. So anyway, as always, guys, I really appreciate you watching. I love talking with you guys You're the best. And um, you've really reignited this hobby for me. I was kind of on cruise control for a long time there, um, just doing things here and there and uh, building Steigers <laughs> mainly for myself. And um Seeing a lot of what you guys have done and a lot of your real farms and things of that nature, chatting with you guys has really uh, made me branch out a little bit into what I like. I mean, I would have never had this huge uh, planter sitting back here on my model farm two years ago. Wouldn't have done it, but I, I've seen some of you guys doing it. I've heard some of you guys be like, hey, why don't you do a you know, really big planter or something like that? You know. So you guys have kind of pushed me in a new direction a little bit, or at least uh, pushed me forward some, so I appreciate that. Hope you have a great night and a great weekend. Thanks for watching.